I'm Dr. Uh, Bill Comey. I'm the Vice President for Operations and Planning here at the College of Southern Maryland. Uh, we're very happy that you have joined us uh, on this beautiful day uh, to celebrate our partnership with Farming for Hunger and to participate in this ribbon cutting ceremony. Um, to kick off our program, it's my pleasure to introduce CSM's President, Dr. Maureen Murphy. Thank you, Bill. I can't tell you how excited I am to have you all here today. First of all, we're gathered together. That is such a treat in this beautiful, beautiful setting on this beautiful evening. And we've got so many, so many of our extended family here with us. And I'd like to recognize a few people. Um, first of all, I'm, I'm grateful that the Calvert Board of County Commissioners has not just Commissioner President Buddy Hans, but we've got Steve Weems and Kelly McConkey with us as well, and I'm grateful for their presence. From our foundation, we have foundation directors uh, Brenda Lowe and newest one, Natalie Cotton, so we're happy to have them. <laughs> On my board, we have trustees with us. We have our chair, Jay Webster, vice chair, Sean Coates, Christy Lombardi, Sonia Cox, Key Abel, and really somebody who's very, very special to us. We have Trustee Emerita, Mary Krug, and her husband, Judge Oren Krug. So thank you all. <laughs> Representing our business community, because you know that's where we have lots and lots of partnerships. We have Kathy Maney from the Calvert Chamber. So thank you, Kathy. And we got my team, and we have all of you and we have all of the partners who have worked on this absolutely beautiful project. I can't tell you what this means. I've learned so much through this project. Those of you who know Bernie Fowler know he's an evangelist. And he has converted me not only into the power of what it means to grow food, but growing community through that. And through this partnership, we are going to be able to come together we are growing food to take care of the food insecurity in our own family, with our own students, in our community. But more than that, we're building the lives of people who are working the soil and working together. I am so proud of this partnership. It just, it, it, I have goosebumps. I really do. And it's so nice to see all of us here gathered together today to celebrate it. But the reason that it happened the reason that it happened was because of the vision of our board chair, Jay Webster, who wouldn't let it go. <laughs> he kept saying, we've got to meet. I was like, I'm busy. He goes, no, we really have to meet. This is important. And he was right. He was absolutely right. And because of that, things got set in motion, and here we are. So with no further ado, I want to turn it over to my board chair, Jay Webster. Thank you, President Murphy. Uh, this is a special day for the College of Southern Maryland, uh, the Farming for Hunger organization, and all of Southern Maryland. Food insecurity is a fact of life for approximately 35 million people nationally, 620,000 people in Maryland, and 40,000 people right here in Southern Maryland. These people struggle to afford the very basic necessities of life. Uh, this partnership with the College of Southern Maryland and Farming for Hunger will be a catalyst to help reduce the struggle for those that have food insecurities in our region. Bill also, also just mentioned this a minute ago, but I'll mention it again for those who may not have heard. You're going to hear a lot of very important information this evening. As an attendee of many events, I often find myself reflecting on the messages after the event and want to learn more. The CSM team has done a great job creating this information for your future reference and use. You may access it by the Q code on the display board right over here. Simply open your smartphone camera feature, place the phone as if you were going to take a picture, and hover above the Q code. A message will appear on your screen. Tap the message and it will open your phone to the web page with this important information. Uh, it's my privilege to introduce our next speaker, who is Calvert County uh, of Commissioner Board Chair, President Earl Buddy Hans. 
So good evening. It's a pleasure to be here. My fellow commissioners, Steve Weems and Kelly McConkey. It was such a great evening here to celebrate this collaboration between Bernie Fowler's Farming for Hunger and the Community College. You know, Bernie's done so much good work at uh, over Serenity Farms, uh, helping people change their lives. You know, it's not, not just about growing food. It's about changing people's lives and the impact that it can have when people get their hands in the dirt and see something grow from a little seed and produce food at the end of the season. It's, it's a quite an experience for people that have never done that before. And, uh, the, you know, the collaboration with the community college, the other benefit of that is children coming here to community college, getting their basics, might not know what they want to do. There's so much opportunity in agriculture. And people say, well, I don't want to farm. Well, you don't have to farm. You know, the technology that's in my equipment today, somebody's got to keep that running because I don't have a clue. <laughs> somebody's got to develop that technology. You know, there's plant engineering, there's livestock husbandry. There's so much opportunity in the field of agriculture. And hopefully this project will open up some young people's eyes and give them an opportunity to get, get a good career going in agriculture. It is still the number one industry in the state of Maryland. Uh, uh, Kelly Swan's here. I forget what the gross number is in Calvert County. It's five or ten million dollars gross revenue the last I heard. Um, and it's an important part. You know, people move to Calvert County and they talk about, you know, we like the rural atmosphere. We like to see all the open space. Well, we can spend all the money in the world preserving land, but if we don't have farmers out there farming that land, we haven't done anything but created some open space. So it's very important that we pr protect and promote the agriculture community that we have here in Calvert County. And uh, I can't finish without saying that uh, we all need to keep uh, Senator Bernie Fowler in our prayers, having a little tough time, and uh, we all should keep him in our prayers. And my next job is to introduce the next speaker, and her and I made a deal. I don't have to pronounce her last name, and she doesn't have to pronounce mine. So I'm going to introduce Ray, Prince Frederick, SGA. All right, I knew I should have worn my heels today. All right, can you, can you see me from the back? Okay, <laughs> so thank you, Commissioner Hans, for your remarks. Um, my name is Ray Misowski. I am a student here at the College of Southern Maryland. I am also the president of the Prince Frederick Student Association and the student government's second vice president. A couple of weeks ago, I was invited to attend CSM staff team building at the Serenity Farm by my student life advisors. Considering my busy life as a student, a spouse, a mother, and everything else, I thought it would be nice to take a break and have fun with my colleagues and mentors. Honestly, I am still thankful for that invitation because my Farming for Hunger experience made a huge impact not only in my academic and professional life, but also in my personal life. Farming for Hunger is an amazing organization with such wonderful team members. Well, actually scratch that. Farming for Hunger is a wonderful family with such an incredible mission, and one of them is to address the food insecurity problem in the Southern Maryland community. See, I was born and raised in the Philippines, and food insecurity is a very familiar concept to me. My family and I experienced it for at least first 10 years of my life. My, neighbor back ho my neighbors back home are still experiencing it. Um, children and adults are still experiencing it as I speak. In fact, 64% Filipinos are chronically, chronically food insecure right, right now, at this moment. And according to UN's current estimates, there are ne nearly 690 million people hungry worldwide. Here in Maryland alone, one in every three of us may suffer from food insecurity. Having organizations like Farming for Hunger is a great relief for people in the community who may be struggling to put food on their tables. And here at CSM, we are also working to address food insecurity and the impact it has on student success. In 2017, the CSM Student Government Association in partnership with President's Cabinet um, installed micro pantries called hawk feeders on CSM campuses to help address short-term basic food needs of students and staff. During the pandemic, we continued to distribute food to students and staff in need through our mobile hawk feeders. And these are the events while the college were in remote operation status. We also held 14 mobile hawk feeders from May 2020 to August 2021. 
we distributed a total of 13,290 13, pounds of food to 333 students. And we are not going to stop here. We are continuing to expand our efforts and are continue, uh, and currently working on establishing a larger formal pantry program to serve more of our students. We are excited about the possibilities of what a Farming for Hunger slash CSM partnership can accomplish in the future. Lastly, I would like to thank CSM for always taking the initiative to care for our campus and community members. Thank you also to Mr. Bernie Fowler Jr. and for this great opportunity to partner with you for a great cause. Also, thank you so much to the staff and volunteers who, t who are tirelessly working to make a difference. You are all amazing and I'm so grateful to, grateful to be a part of this institution who genuinely cares for their community. Thank you. And now in, it is in my great honor to introduce the founder of Farming for Hunger, Mr. Bernie Fowler, Jr. I want to thank Dr. Murphy and the board for sharing this vision with us um, and the, really the potential of what this garden represents. Um, we're really, we're very excited about it. Dr. Murphy participated, as she said, in a team building experience which represents the spirit of our work. Um, many people over the years have driven by Serenity Farm and they've seen the sign that says Farming for Hunger and they go, oh, that's really nice. They grow food for the hunger community. Food is the vessel, right, to build community. Food is an opportunity to be used to grow lives. And that's really the core. It didn't start out that way, but that's the core of where we at, we're at today. It's about growing lives and serving one another. And Jay, I can't thank you enough. So Jay Webster has come out for years and it's, it's ironic that years ago and, 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 and during the downturn of the 2008 uh, building crisis that we went through, Jay and I were competitors. I had a custom home building company and he's with Mark. And, um, and to come together years later um, in an effort to support in our community and the love that both of us have for our community and serving others, I, I can't thank you enough because Jay was worried about Rose and I, my, my wife Rose, please raise your hand up so I, so I don't forget that. Um, <laughs> um, you came by and you recognized many, many times of the struggles that we had of trying to expand and get the message out. And it was about this time last year that Jay called and said, hey, I've got an idea, can I run it by you? We've got this big front lawn at CSM at the Prince Frederick campus, and would you consider putting a garden over here, and more importantly, bringing your programs here? So again, we don't want to get confused. The garden is absolutely going to be used for students and food insecurity, but it's what happens in the garden. And so Jay, I just want to thank you for all the efforts as a Rotarian, he helped orchestrate and raise $26,000 for our Growing Food Matters program through Tower Gardens that we have in elementary schools. That's going to be starting up again here very shortly. So um, I'm excited to see where this goes, and I know you are too. Today is a, is a launch, is a ribbon cutting of what could be a demonstration for other community colleges. Uh, throughout the area. So we want to take our time and we want to get it right here, Dr. Murphy, and I know we will. I also want to thank anyone that's, that's here from Cheney Enterprises um, and the Wills Group. They put up the funding to allow us to build uh, this wonderful garden with the, the, the tunnels and the raised beds and all the material that it takes to, to put this together. And they are just such great champions for our region and for the state. I really want to thank all the staff at CSM. Uh, it's just been amazing in a short period of time, the, the friendships and the camaraderie that we, we formed and the champions that are coming forward. And, and I could go down the list and I'm going to forget somebody, but, but Bill and Kim, uh, Angie, Alan, who's not here, uh, security Steve, who I call every day when I come on the, on the, on the, uh, on the campus, and, and so many other people um, totally get 
what we're trying to do here now. Um, and so I'm really grateful for that and, and, and everyone um, that's just putting in an unbelievable effort. And, and I think the buzz is, is really picking up because more and more champions uh, are coming on board with the college, with the professors, and so on and so forth. So I think it's kind of been covered, so I don't want to beat it to death, but what really does the garden represent? Um, my son summed it up a couple days ago talking with him. He said, Dad, you know, Farming for Hunger's kind of been like a science project. And I said, really? Because I didn't, I didn't like science when I was back in school. <laughs> and, and he said, well, you know, you've, you started out in this direction, and season after season after season, you know, you've learned from things that you've tried. And, and you've come back to the drawing board and you've changed some things. And now you're at a point now where, with, with this effort at the college, um, you know, you're at a point where there's, there's a hypothesis. And there's, there's, you know, the problem has been solved. And what can we do going forward with it? And, and he's right. So when I was going through my own personal struggles, and I'm not going to go into that story today, when I came alive starting Farming for Hunger, I wanted to feed the world. And I kind of went about it as we need to grow as much food as we possibly can. But it took a few years to realize we need to shrink it down smaller. The, it's more important about building relations and, and helping one another, including everyone to the table. And, and once I started to understand, after, after almost losing my daughter to addiction, um, and I, I just started to realize that we need to, we need to pull this smaller. We need to have time for one another, right? We get to the point where we're so busy. Go, 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 go. All this chaos and distraction is running our life. How do we take a deep breath? How do we just pause? The garden represents a place to walk into. It represents a place of education. It has a purpose. Uh, there's a promise when you plant something, like, like Commissioner Hans said, something's coming. And during that time, it's teachable moments about life and how do, we, how do we lean on one another? How do we talk to one another? Are you okay today? Are you going through something? All that can take place in a garden. I don't want us to lose the vision that it's strictly the food that we're growing. It's about inclusion, it's about community, and that takes me to the next step. This garden, folks, would not have been built without the six men in the back here. Please raise your hands up, guys. <laughs> that have spent many, many years incarcerated. As a matter of fact, they still are. So this is a kind of a first to be standing on a college property with men that have come out and now embrace the spirit of what Farming for Hunger is all about and the inclusion. And how proud are they of all the, uh, all the sweat and all the time that you put in to building this? Lewis, you remember when we first came out here and we just started pulling some tapes and Marvin, and you were like, I don't know what we're gonna do here. And we started gritting and doing measurements. And then the other day there was a conversation of, wow, we all did this together. So I also want to make a point out to the, the, everyone here that I tell these guys all the time, they have a PhD in corrections. They have a PhD in life, in street, right? That is valuable. They are worth something. They have value that they can now teach others about don't make the same mistakes that I made. And I'm really excited that at 9 o'clock tomorrow morning, right, we're right back at work. Not raising the food, working with 30 students from the Student Life Organization with Michelle Rubel, um, that we're going to be running those students through team building. And these guys are going to have an opportunity to shine to work with these students because, folks, four out of every 10 kids that I work with have, and, and probably even greater that we work with, are struggling with some kind of mental health issue. And, and this is an opportunity to be recognized and to pass that on to someone else. We're not the ones that are going to be the counselors, but we can pass that on to the teachers, to the professors, to the administrators, and get those students help. So I'm not allowed to ramble on too long here. So Dr. Murphy's going cut, cut. <laughs> As I grew up with my dad in politics, and, and, and I, and I kind of have turned into somewhat of a preacher, so that's dangerous to be like a preaching politician up here right now. So I, I do want to just thank you guys again, though, 
from the bottom of my heart of what, what you all have done for our community and, and what tomorrow looks like. Um, Lieutenant Stepney, I'm going to put you on the spot really, really quick. So Lieutenant Stepney just became Lieutenant Stepney yesterday. So we want to... She has been with me since 2013 as Sergeant Stepney. She was the one that used to come in when I had all these out-of-the-box ideas of what we're going to do with middle school and high school kids and inmates and this and that and the other. And she'd be like, Mr. Fowler, <laughs> you can't do that with the inmates and, the, and, and, and these children. I said, well, Sergeant Stepney, uh, there are rules and regulations, and I appreciate that. But I made a promise to the good Lord um, that we're, we're going we're gonna to do something. I said, just, just look out there. Look at, look at what's happening right now. Look at that activity. And so she started to get it. And she's been a huge, huge blessing to every step of the way. She still stays on me. She still smacks my hand. But she's been a huge blessing uh, along the way. Again, I'd like to bring up, uh, at this time to wrap it up, I'd like to bring up uh, Ethan Everly. Um, Ethan, can you come on up here for a second? You want to come up for this point? So I'd like to uh, I'd like to recognize because of COVID, right? He doesn't know what's going on, so he's like in shock right now. <laughs> but because of COVID in, in in 2020, we didn't get to have a regular ceremony that we normally would. Um, so I thought tonight was a great opportunity to recognize Ethan who's an 18-year-old who happens to be attending CSM at the Hughesville campus uh, with our 2020 Volunteer of the Year Award with Farming for Hunger. Thank you. And there's a little something that goes with that. Thank you. Okay? We really, we really appreciate it. Thank you so much. So at this time, I'm going to turn it over, and I just I want to – I do want to say that uh, – Really, really quick, I want to say, Rose, thank you. Thank you for 10 years of, of staying by my side and, and being right beside me, being in the garden today, being at the farm every day. Uh, it takes a special person to, to go through what we've gone through, and I couldn't have done it without you. And I, and I really appreciate that, and I want everybody to understand that. She's Mama Rose to the men and to the other 136 men that came out be before them. So thank you, sweetie. Thank you thank so you. much. It's powerful, important stuff. And gentlemen, thank you so much for helping us out. I, Lewis, Marvin, I, I'm, I'm astonished at what we've been able to put together, and we couldn't have done it without you. And I'm going to tell you, it's interesting. We, I, I have, we had a late-breaking recognition here that I'd like to share with you, that there are people who are outside of this group who know how important this work is. And we have just received a citation to the College of Southern Maryland in recognition of the ribbon cutting for the Farming for Hunger Garden. I extend my congratulations on this great occasion and my best wishes for many, many years of service to our community. Presented this day, 21 of October, 2021, from Senator Michael Jackson. So we are being recognized for what we are doing, which is simply coming together for a common purpose. To continue this celebration now, I'd like us all to kind of go over to the ribbon cutting area and let's cut some ribbon. One, two, three. <laughs> Woohoo! <Yay. laughs>